I got the coolest comment recently. I was having a video with my sister. Some of you may have seen it where we were discussing decluttering some of the sentimental items from my mom's home when she passed away a couple of years ago. Well, one item that we really talked about quite a bit was photos. And my mother did have bins and bins and boxes and boxes of photos. There was even a suitcase full of photos that we had to use a saw to get open because it had been so many years since anyone had accessed it. Inside were some treasures, but the comment that I received on that video was such a good one that I thought I would answer it this week. And it came from Angie and she asked, what did you do with the photos after you decided which ones to keep? And she was asking some really great questions about our process of going through the photos. And so I thought I might break that down today and you might be surprised at my answer. Well, hi there. If we haven't met before, my name is Dawn. I'm a licensed marriage and family therapist, a homeschooling mom, and a Jesus lover. I want to inspire you to connect more deeply with God and your family and to help you live intentionally so that you can create space for that connection. I know that so many of you have commented. You have like basements full of photos. My very first tip is simply to start small, <laughs> so bite-sized pieces. Some people might say, well, just take it one album at a time. I feel like even that can be overwhelming. So why not take it just even one page at a time? You know, open it up, look at the photos there. There might be six to 10 on a page. Maybe you can knock out a couple pages a day, or maybe you're a person who really wants to feel like, okay, I knocked out an entire album. Obviously, it really depends on what volume you're talking about and what rate at which you want to accomplish this. Tip number two, pick your favorites. So this is something that really opened a lot of freedom in my photo journey with decluttering. When I looked at this volume of photos with my sister, I just had this like, <gasps> like what? There's so many and they feel so sacred because they represent ancestors and family members, lines of genealogy. I don't know how these all ended up at my mother's home, but she was like the catch-all for China and photos. We actually ended up with 11 sets of China in my mother's basement. But back to the photos. Think about general seasons of life. It can be overwhelming to look at all the photos and be like, oh, I like this one and I like this one and I like this one. Think back to the season. Think about photos that actually spark emotion and then think about the ones that you want to remember later. That can be helpful in sort of qualifying which photos to hang on to. I know that photos with people in them really speak to me. Lots of the photo albums that we found in my mom's home were of landscapes. Now, landscapes are lovely, especially if you're in a beautiful place, but for me personally, landscapes do not actually spark any warmth or emotion because I don't even know where this place is. But when there are people in there and connections and relationships, then I get interested. So maybe you're like me. Maybe you'll capture more of those types of photos or pick and choose a few of those that represent a certain season. After you've chosen your favorites, my best tip is to download a photo scanning app. The one that I chose when I was going through my mom's basement was Google photo scan and it's free and you literally go and hover over the photo and it captures each corner and then it scans it in and then it becomes part of the Google Photos app and then you can absolutely organize it by album or category. So what's nice is you have an electronic copy and then you can create albums and invite people to view the albums. So all of this moves online. A lot of you are going to say, okay, well, what if the app does like deletes it? I know there is that to consider. Like, will we always have access to these photos? So you can decide, do you want to keep a hard copy of just your favorites? That is up to you. Now, here's my surprising answer to Angie's question. I personally threw them away. I know. Feel free to unsubscribe if you need to. <laughs> I threw them away. <laughs> I personally did not want to 
keep inventory in my home that I had no use for. And I decided that even if the worst thing happened and I lost the photos forever, I would be okay. So I feel like you need to kind of answer that for yourself and your own comfort level. If you decide to keep some photos as sort of a backup to any sort of electronic version, be sure to limit yourself in size. Maybe you set aside one bin, and when that small bin is full of photos, you've reached your max. And so then at least you know that you really have to choose carefully which ones you'd like to keep. I would recommend removing the photos from the album sort of format. These are so big and bulky, and to store them, I need like this enormous tote. And honestly, I'm tripping over it in my storage room, I feel like I just, I can't live this way anymore. So I need to get rid of the albums. They're just not working for me. If you have a small tote that can be easily put on a shelf, that is a different story. So you decide what your comfort level is. Last but not least, you're going to take the photos that you didn't want to choose and you have my permission to throw them away. I know, Angie was probably as surprised as you are that I actually threw them in the trash. Now, what emotion came up? We better talk about it because we got to have a therapy moment on these videos. The deal is I did struggle. I struggled a little bit with like, is this okay? And I'm here to tell you right now, it is totally okay. There are some things that we have beliefs about that they are hallowed, right? Like photos for me held this like elevated status. And it was my sister who actually freed me up. And she's like, it's okay, Dawn, just pick a few favorites and then let the rest go. And honestly, the feeling of blessing and releasing those photos, it was absolutely freeing. I felt lighter, literally so much lighter. And I kind of felt this empowerment like, yeah, I don't need to hang on to 10 photos of the ceiling from my sister's wedding. I don't need to hang on to whatever this landscape photo is. In fact, I don't have any shoulds around these photos at all. If none of the photos speak to me, if they represent a painful time in my life, if they represent a painful relationship or one that's shifted since I took these photos, all the more reason to bless and release. And it's a symbol of creating space for other connection that's more healthy, that's more deep, that's more authentic. So I wanna give you permission to throw it away. Oh, can we still be friends? I want you to know that I am a caring person. I just felt so compelled to follow my sister's advice. And I am telling you, I don't regret it one bit. Once they were in the bin, the trash bin, I actually did feel that lightness, but it took me all the way to get to the trash bin. And I had to sort of self-talk my way through it. So if you have to do that too, that's totally normal. Like, this is okay. I can release this. What am I holding on to it for? And that is the question to ask yourself. When you run into the shoulds around your photos, ask yourself, well, what purpose would this photo serve? If you can't come up with anything, it's time to let it go. There are certain times that we want to remember. There are certain relationships that we treasure and want to remember. But you do not have to hold on to things that are not special to you. You do not have to hold on to things out of a should or a rule or some sort of rigid belief or maybe even the opinion of a family member. Some of you might have family members who are not okay with you releasing these photos. And this would be my final word of advice. If you have a peanut gallery sort of advising you as to which photos to keep and oh, you can't get rid of that, please bring them over to their doorstep and just let them know that you have now empowered them to go through it and keep all the photos that they would like. And you are welcome for that opportunity. Set it squarely in their lap because you don't want to take on their beliefs or their shame around letting things go. So go ahead and invite them into the process. Let them make those tough decisions or let them hold on to the inventory. But you, you're going to be free.